So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Prescott on first down. And this one complete to Witten over the middle. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second and just about a few inches here. Incredible aggressiveness going and getting the football. Go. <clears throat> Second down, Prescott. It's going to be caught at the 10 yard line. And he's able to get it down to the two yard line. They get seven there on the screen. It'll set up a third down. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape, or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area. But they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. Good play here. Third down and goal from the If you get in there, my guy. So far defensively, and now that's going to bring up. If you get in there, don't look too good for you. Because this is a big decision coming up. Listen to the crowd. You can tell they've already made their decision. You know they want them to go for it. But the big decision does rest with the head coach. What would he decide to do? And it appears they'll go for it here on fourth down. A big call on the game's opening drive. Prescott to throw. No, sir. You won't even get in there. You know, fuck that now. They wanted seven on that opening drive. They didn't want to settle for a field goal. Felt like a tone setter. You know, that's what they were looking for. Because a lot of teams, they, 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 they'll march it down the field, and when they kick the field goal, it almost feels disappointing, doesn't it? You have a nice drive. It's a, I think this team decided, guess what? No matter what, we're going to get six. We're trying to put those points on the board and set them back on their heels. But unfortunately, that mentality did not work out. Work out. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. Okay. Time running out here on the clock. Now Wilson back into his end zone. And incomplete open things <coughs> up. Played that was smart, my guy. A lot of the weight of this offense falls on the shoulders of the running back. That's because the offense knows if they give him any openings, any opportunities, he can turn it into a big play at any time. Moving in the late They'll throw again from their own end zone. They hits Jermaine Curse. Give him 10 yards on the pickup. And then he faced with a third and in the Something to try and test that. Wilson now to throw on third down. He's got Curse. And he 
He's going to get a first down here as he's take taken down. down at the 22. The goal of every offense is to move the chains, pick up first downs. A nice job finding an open receiver for a completion. They'll run it now out of the gun. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Sean Lee, the pro bowler, there for the tackle. On second down, here's Wilson. Complete out right to Kurz. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. The partner, a nice little connection there on the corner route. The receiver set it up perfectly, worked his way inside, and then broke it back to the outside for the completion. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. The insistence of speed at every position is really seen at the defensive end spot. These guys in the old days were often outside linebackers. They just pushed them forward because they wanted to play fast and get to the quarterback or the running back quicker than ever before. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. Off the play fake to Rawls. Wilson. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. My high school coach John Ford used to say all the time, if you're in a bad situation, laddie, don't compound it with a bad decision as well. And I think that's what we just saw there. Harassed in the pocket. And throws into double coverage anyway. He called you laddie? He called me laddie. And that was the nicest thing he called me. There's Wilson to throw. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. The pickup of 11 and it moves the chains. The first carry for the rookie pro size. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon hits the Seahawks with a football to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. You switched it. Why you switch it? Why you switch it? You was on the right side. You switched it. blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. They usually know it's quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards, and it'll be second and very short. And now the passing game here in the second quarter is starting to heat up a little bit. Let's feel the rhythm start to happen, right? You see it now. Get off my guy. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do so say it's time. We can throw, we can throw it well, but we can all the time. A long drive here, play 12 coming up for the offense. You know I had the ball for four minutes, right? It ain't looking good for you. They run with a power back. Rolls. And he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. 18 yards there, and it'll be a first and goal. Whenever we meet with coaches and they always talk about wanting to establish running the football, it's oftentimes with a good tight end who can control the line of scrimmage and the point of attack, and they're becoming harder to find because the colleges are giving us a whole lot of receiving tight ends, former wide receivers who can run, not necessarily block very well. In this case, though, we saw two tight ends on the field, both of them with the ability to block, mm -hmm. and they ran the ball successfully behind that power set. So the chain game... Go on and go to sleep with Naya. first and goal. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. Y'all right, better do something, y'all. Awesome. Y'all better do something. Be down. <laughs> one thing I know, defensive coaches love it when they don't have to invite their players to the party. This strong safety, you never have to ask him twice. To help and run support, he's going to arrive and in a bad mood. 
Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to them. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them. They run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. On third and goal, Wilson. His pass caught at the four. Just a five-yard pickup, but it leads to fourth down. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. Situation instead of being able to play the pass, and they were beaten on that possession. No, oh, he missed okay. the BAT. No good on the extra point, so it went down there, and this will stay a six point ball game. Kausch get out to send this one away following the score. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And on the last drive, they were in field goal range. They just opted not to kick it, didn't get it. How does that change the mentality this go around? I don't think it changes much for the head coach because this is what he preaches all the time. Attack at all times in any spot on the field. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Take them all day. Set up shop at the 33 yard line. And out now come the Seahawks. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. Oh, and a bad throw there. It's intercepted. Picked oh, off here by Anthony Hitchens. And his guys are going to get the football at the 28 yard line. So out come the Cowboys now as their offense gets set to take over. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play call because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in it, and let him fling another one. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere. In the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Looking to throw. Prescott. Out left side here to Bryant. I know the numbers this season are not Des Bryant numbers, but something keeps nagging me that he's not on the downside of his career, that he's going to be poised for a big playoff run. There's just something about him and his explosiveness. You mentioned the numbers, 796, 13 games played, 50 receptions, but you, you still think there's a lot there in the tank. I certainly do, and I think it got off to a bad start for him because he was injured early. Then he had to adjust to Dak Prescott as his quarterback member. He knew what Tony Romo would do in every situation. And I think that Ezekiel Elliott, his ascension, really hurt Des Bryant in terms of numbers because they became much more of a running team. A minute 59 to go in the first half. We're back to Arlington right after this timeout. And now a first down following that long game. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. 
Prescott looks to throw on first. Drops it underneath to Elliott. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought no. down. No. Get him on my tablet in the room. Come on. Leader Jason Witten, the intended target. That'll bring up second down. That's just flat out a terrific play because it's rare that you see a hitch route batted down. That means someone read that one really well and was right on the spot when the ball got to the receiver. Receiver left. They'll throw again. Prescott. And that's going to be incomplete. Jason Whitney intended target. And it's third and five. An extra defensive back on the field here for third and goal. Here's Prescott. And that is cool. Touchdown. Lance Dunbar. <laughs> and the Cowboys are now just a one away from moving out in front. So on third and beat, they dial up the pass and it works to hit the end zone. And it's really not a surprise to me. That's a throwing down in the NFL because of how tough it is to run the football. But what offenses like to do is still show run formations to make them respect it and throw out of those. In this case, they took a nice shot at the end zone and made it pay off. And this one through the uprights and good. Kick it away after the touchdown. This is taken at the three. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure, if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. <laughs> Yay. 
Now with the play clock about to expire, we get a whistle and a timeout. It's just their fault, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. They go back to the air here after the IMT on the last drive. Complete. Richardson has it. A gain of six there on first. Four yards remaining now on second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. They're going to hurry back to the line now. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Seven yards on the play, and that'll make it second down. Now Wilson on second down. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Many times the mindset of a play caller after a quarterback's thrown an interception on the previous drive is to come right back and give them a throw to get their confidence back. Give them something easy, get a completion, kind of get them settled again. Instead, this ball was tipped in the air and almost turned into an interception. Offense trying to make a big play, defense trying to make a big play, turned into an incompletion. So now maybe they can back off. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Barry Church. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. The Cowboys offense heading back out and ready to go again. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. Backing up. He's going to let this one go deep. And this one is incomplete. Time for a break. We've hit halftime. Two quarters down. Two still remain. We step aside. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. And on second and ten now. They come up in an offset eye. On second down, Wilson. And he rifles one incomplete. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe-tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. A toss right to Rawls. Trying to turn the corner, but he's going to be stopped right near the line of scrimmage. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine.
second down. Rolls. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Back-to-back one-yard runs here, so that leaves him with a third down and eight. spot for the offense third and eight on third down Wilson and he finds a man on the crossing route and able to pick up the first across midfield to the 47 and fits the exact right word over the middle there's almost always traffic so anytime you're a receiver in that area you're not just focused on catching the football you're wondering where the collision's going to come from, right? Because there's almost always someone there able to concentrate, catch it, and even add it a little extra at the end with a short run. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Second and just one. Second down, here's Wilson. And to the left side here, Wilson. The ball comes out. And this is going to get out of bounds. So they will gain a bit of yardage on the play, actually. And they'll hold on to the football as well. So here we go, first and ten now. They'll run with Rawls. And a solid run down inside the 30. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. They go again with Rawls. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. Third and two, now Wilson. It's caught outright by Graham. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. And this seemingly endless drive continues. They come out here in the eye. Now they'll run it on the toss. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Thomas Rawls, a 23-yard run. And the Seahawks are going to retake the lead. Well, partner, that was another explosive run. And one thing I've learned in our time in this game... Yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit, but for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball, too, right? Oh, without a doubt, you need that difference maker lugging the rock. Hauschka now to send this one away following the score. Now it's Lucky Whitehead on the return. <coughs> and it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. The Cowboys' offense now, they head out for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game, a chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here at half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot of the time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most of, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. Elliott. And he works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. Defensively, the tackle by Cam Chancellor. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. A 
let's see what the offense comes with here. Second and eight. Now it's a bootleg with Prescott. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Mike Morgan from that outside linebacker spot. He's able to get in there for a loss of nine. So a big sack on second down. Now let's see what the offense has in store for third. Third and long for Prescott. Looking for his tight end, written and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And he'll bring this one back to the 29. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to come back onto the field. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good, so they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan. And thought there were some holes in the defense and they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And we'll see if they can do just that. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. And now they're in the hurry up. Back now in Arlington. It's the Seahawks with the possession. They also have the lead here as we get set for the fourth and final quarter. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they'll get him down right about the 20. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. And they pick up the first down there with a gain of four. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. The busy afternoon continues for Rawls. And he's going to get hit at the line of scrimmage and driven backwards. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Back-to-back -back stops, make it third and ten. They were stopped on that play. There's had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to them the rest of the game. Offense trying to avoid stalling out, facing a third and ten. Wilson turns and gives to Prosek. Oh, no, he lost the football. So they escape, so to speak, maintaining the football. Defensively, though, opportunity missed. It definitely was because that's all defense is talking about, getting the football and either advancing it the other way or just getting possession and turning it over to their offense. That can be a little bit deflating. You're exactly right. A lost opportunity. That one good for 10 yards. And the decision to go for it pays off. They've got a first and goal. Now Wilson. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Gotta give some credit there. Able to hop up in the air and bat that one away. And that's frustrating for an offensive lineman because the only recourse is when he goes in the air to try and get some type of a pop or a shove, hoping to bring his arms down. Now it's Wilson. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone for the Seahawk touchdown. Jermaine Kurz from three yards out. And the Seahawks capitalize on the short field as they take it in for six. And he atones for his miss the first time around as this one is up and good to extend their lead. I was in the road, bro. Got this one in the bag. Got no coming back. How's you get out and send this one away following the score? Bro, and no runs you do. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive? Or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and do the ball again. You're going to take it. And God is man complete. 
And he'll be taken Ooh, down back, before back. he gets into enemy territory. Look, y'all, ran fast. In the completion, nice throw, nice oh, geez, catch, man. but Charles, big thanks, goes to the men up front. They allow the quarterback to throw out of the rocking chair, so to speak. Plenty of time to survey the field and find an open man. So the offense has it first and ten. Better not put your boy over there with Sherman no more. They go play action here on first down. Got a man over the middle. It's Williams. A really good pick up of 28 yards. Cool yeah. under pressure right there. Shit. Escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. It doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, they move. And they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary. And I think you're exactly right. And this is intercepted. And that should do it. A great read and it's picked off. My ball. Seattle now ready to march out of the field. I'm bad. We always talk about possessions being at a premium. Good game, bro. Good game. Good game. Good game. Good game. Good game. 20 times. Good game. Good game. Good game. Good game. Good game. Good game. Taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25 yard line.
one second, bro. I'm gonna whoop you up. Go in the room and lay down, baby. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Start on the ground with Rawls. So he got three of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. Six yards to go here on second down. Fake to Rawls. Now it's Wilson. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. And the starting defensive unit here for Pittsburgh. Stephon Tewitt's ability to play defensive end, and yet rise up and knock passes away when quarterbacks try to throw them, he makes it hard to get around. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. On third down, Wilson. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roll free and brings up fourth down. So on fourth down, as seen on TV, here's their resident strongman, John Ryan, on to punt. Back deep for the Steelers, Antonio Brown. Taking it about the 16. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. They come up with one running back. That's Bell. Now Roethlisberger, a screen to Bell. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. Got to give some credit there defensively. They snuffed out that screen early on first down. Really read it well, didn't they? Because they didn't bring the pressure that they expected. They covered all the passing lanes. So once you see it break down as the passer, I think in this situation, you're throwing it in the feet of your... And he fires one that's intercepted. And some space here. A great... And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. So a pick six there out of the nickel package. They went with five DBs becoming the base package in the NFL is the nickel. Hard to throw against. That was demonstrated one more time. A pick six going the other way. And this will give the Seahawks a 7 to nothing lead. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he probably should have stayed in the end zone as he'll muster a return up to only the 14-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. 
Well, conventional football, football 101, tells us if you don't get it back to the 20-yard line on kickoff return, that's a disappointment. But some of these team special teams coaches, with approval by the head coach, they give them full authority to go ahead and bring it out and try to be aggressive. Almost what we call the green light, red light day. Green light means go, red light means stop. Looks like he had green on that play. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. On your screen now, here are the offensive starters. At wideout, Antonio Brown is certainly someone that the defense always has to account for. Without a doubt, a true number one receiver, it doesn't matter to him how defenses want to cover him. He sees it as a challenge and knows how to defeat him. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. There's a lot of discussion this year about the MVP and who's going to win it. And Tom Brady's name comes up, and immediately someone says, don't forget, he didn't play the first four games this season. Should he be in it? Well, Le'Veon Bell missed games early, and if he hadn't missed those games, I think we'd be talking about him as a strong MVP candidate, don't you? Yeah, I mean, he was over 1,200 yards, just seven rushing touchdowns, but also didn't play Week 17 either, so that's five weeks of the season gone for him. But you remember, it wasn't Week 16 against Buffalo when he just absolutely decimated them for over 200 yards rushing? Probably needed the time off after that anyway. And actually, by the way, quick correction, if you add in Week 17, he only missed four weeks this season, but still, great production. It's a loss of two, now third down. Brandon, there's no doubt the defense has to be excited after stacking up back-to-back -back running plays. But I still remember my... Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Cliff Averill. And how about this? Fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. In there to drop it for a loss of 10, and it'll be fourth and long. They'll indeed go for it with Roethlisberger. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And this is incomplete. A surprising move to go for it predictably, at least somewhat predictably. It doesn't pay off. And now possession's going to go over with a football at the 20-yard line. And a great spot to start this drive from here. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. Baldwin with it over the middle. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. I don't care how many times you tell the story, it never loses its luster for me. Doug Baldwin, undrafted, out of Stanford, and plays like a number one receiver should in the NFL. I don't care how you cover him. I don't care that his size isn't great. He's the one that typically comes up with the football. Absolutely. His roots go all the way back to Gulf Breeze, Florida, where he's from right on the water near Pensacola. And then, of course, to Stanford. And, boy, he's been good. A gain of four on the play. And that'll make it third and goal. Defense is going to every game talking about winning the early downs to make third down a difficult assignment for an offense. On that play, the defense accomplished its goal. That's caught at the three. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Paul Richardson from six yards away. And the Seahawks add on to their lead. Another extra point opportunity here. And it's good, and they have jumped out here to a quick 14-0 first quarter lead. Houshka now to send this one away following the score. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. Out comes the Steeler offense now, ready to see what they can do here. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup 
and recover. Partner, your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground, and then when you want to throw it, look out. Here they come after the quarterback. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height. Sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. As a defender, I always found the slant route extremely difficult to cover unless you're able to jump on top of it early because once he gets his hands on the ball, he's at full speed going away from you. It just it all happens in the blink of an eye, doesn't it? It really does. The timing is so important. That ball's got to be out of the hands of the quarterback and to the receiver like that. And if it is, you often get a very successful play. And some extras coming up on the line here, reading for the blitz. On second down, here's Roethlisberger. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Sammy Coates, the intended target there. And it's third and short. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. Brown, the lone receiver left. Third and two. Now Roethlisberger. He gets it to Brown. Complete. They give him five yards there. It's enough for the first. Back with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's Steeler football to begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. On first and ten, it's Roethlisberger. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, obviously, wild card weekend is upon us, but don't forget about the four teams that have this weekend off. When you get to this part of the season, is that a big advantage? Or, you know, I mean, we've seen some wild card teams run the table, so how big of an advantage is that first round line? You're exactly right. We have seen wild card teams take it all the way to the Super Bowl and win it. The Giants have been a prime example of doing that. But every team I know would love to have that open week and be able to prepare for the playoffs. Why? You rest your injured guys, okay? Mentally, you get a little bit of a break. Everyone kind of gets out of the building for a little while. And the one thing that those teams get a chance to do, assess what's going on ahead of them. All right? They see how the other team plays, able to get in your game plan, almost like you can make the last move before you play. Normally, he's pretty reliable. He usually catches what's thrown to him. On that play, he simply dropped it. been a pretty long drive this will be play number nine and they need 10 yards out of it on third on third down Roethlisberger and now another one thrown incomplete Eli Rogers the intended receiver now fourth down the danger of knowing your assignment dropping to it and calling it a day that's over with because now when you drop into a zone, especially as a defensive back, you're seeing the play in front of you. So if a man wanders into your area, guess what? Now it goes from zone to man-to-man -man coverage in many cases. And on this particular... Oh, wide open, complete! And he just falls short down at the one-yard line. It's a big-time play there on fourth and ten. 57 yards. They'll try and run it in with Bell. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Le'Veon Bell taking it in from a yard out. And the Steelers are able to make this a close game again. And that one makes it 14-7. to Well, 
Boy, they're down only one score. It's still the first half, but they're going to line up for the onside kick. Seahawks looks like they've recovered. They have a second quarter onside kick there that failed. Is that something that maybe they had dialed up before this game started? It feels like it, doesn't it? That they thought they had the right situation, you know, and, and the right approach and going after it also may signal that they feel like they have the superior team, that they can try these sorts of things and it won't come back and hurt them later. Now they'll run it on the toss. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Offense needs something here on second down. It is second and long. From midfield now, here's Wilson. They set up the screen to Rawls. Nothing on the screen that time. Now it's third down. So many screen passes are the result of excellent acting by everyone. But sometimes the guy who's getting the ball takes the play off. <laughs> you know, the running back, because he's, he's eager to get the pass. But sometimes he doesn't act very well about whether he's going to block or leak out or whatever. And I think that they saw that, and that's why they're able to get to him on it. Now Wilson to the sideline, and that is a heck of a catch as he was able to get both feet in. I think the training and practice broke down on that play because he simply didn't run the route deep enough to get to the first down marker, despite what was a really nice catch. And the holder's going to keep it. He's going to try to run for it. They're not going to get it. They try to move the chains with a surprise, but it's a turnover on down. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would, because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Because yeah, the secondary, they really look close. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. No, oh, he almost had it. Already with one interception, just missing his second there. The name of the game is always on defense, put pressure on the quarterback. And that's exactly what they've done today. It looks like they've got him a little bit rattled. That would have been the second interception in the first half. So a second down in completion now brings up third down. From the gun on third down, it's Raffelsberger. Man open left side is Brown. To give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. They come up with one running back. That's Bell. They'll get the football here. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, on that play, the expression, don't blink, you might miss something, certainly applied. That was fast. Defense diagnosed the play, and it was over in a heartbeat. Here's Roethlisberger. This will be caught by Brown. Brandon, with every season, Antonio Brown makes his draft status really seem like a joke, doesn't he? Well, I mean, how did he not go in the first round? Yeah, well, now he did go in the first round of the fantasy football draft. <laughs> but not the real NFL now. draft, but 106 catches this year, just one behind who? One behind Larry Fitzgerald of the Arizona Cardinals, who had a fantastic season himself. But I was talking with an all-pro voter, that books for the AP team. And know what he said? How do I pick receivers? But I do know this, I'm picking Antonio Brown first. Five wide, three of them to the right side. Now Roethlisberger on first down. Over the middle here to Brown. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. And quickly they get to the line. And that's one of his advantages of a passer is that now with his height, 
setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle. He can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play, but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. Roethlisberger on first down. Man open right side. It's Rodgers. A solid pickup of 13 sets him up first and goal. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Now Bell. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second in goal. And now the Seahawks are going to call another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. Brown, the lone receiver left. On second down, here's Roethlisberger. That's caught at the three. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. Now with just one second showing on the play clock, we're going to get a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. On third and goal, Roethlisberger. And caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Antonio Brown as the first half is winding down. And the Steelers are an extra point away from tying this thing up. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. That's fielded in the end zone. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. The drive begins with a run by Rawls. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. see the clock almost empty so this is likely the last play in the second quarter they come out here in the eye Wilson going to give to Rawls first half in the books you're watching the NFL on EA Sports and we welcome you back now alongside Charles Davis I'm Brandon Gordon getting set for quarter number three here so both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is fielded a couple yards deep. 
And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. First half showed us some pretty good offense. Tie game, we'll see what the second half brings. And it'll be interesting because I think both sides feel pretty good about what their offenses are doing. Got to wonder what adjustments are being made defensively to try and get a spark and maybe slow down the other side. But here, do you change up anything on this opening drive? Not offensively, you don't. You've got everything going your way. You've probably prepared for maybe some change-ups you might expect. But overall, you like what your game plan showing you. Got him in. It's Brown. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. 17 yards on the pick up there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. For the offense lining up first and 10. They'll come out in the pistol. Now a first down carry by Bell. And he works his way forward for about four up to the midfield stripe. Tackle made by Deshaun Shedd. Well, so far, this game has gone the way the defensive coordinator had hoped. They've dictated things. They've not let them run the ball very well at all. They gave up a nice game there. I doubt it'll back off their confidence. They've played so well throughout this entire game. From midfield now, here's Roethlisberger. And caught, right side, Green. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Intercepted. Down the numbers. There he goes. A great read and it's picked off. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Well, the first time a defensive yeah. back. You have more chances to make a team now than ever because people are using five defensive backs, six defensive back packages. Not exclusively, but way more than before. That was a nickel package there, and what a pick off. Why is that? Why are they using that more? Because more people are throwing the ball on earlier downs than ever before. This has become a passing league, and because of that, more defensive backs on the field on most plays. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. And the Steelers set to take the field. And following the pick six, and they have decent field position in throwing that pick six. We'll see how they attack this drive. And I think all you say to your guy is, listen, let's just take care of the football a little bit better. Make some better decisions on this drive. And they'll probably help him a little bit with maybe some really high percentage throws early to let him get settled back yeah, in. But they told him, they told us, they've got confidence. That, that's not a problem. Yeah, not a problem at all. They just want to make sure they get things settled down a little bit for their offense and give their defense a little bit of a chance to rest. Second and seven. Now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. On the right side, caught by Green. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. They get the completed pass, but still have more to go here on third down. And they're going to speed things up here. From the gun on third down, it's Roethlisberger. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. A good grab there by the former Central Michigan man, Antonio Brown. And he ate up some real estate on the catch, too, didn't he? I think the most impressive part of it, though, if there's a chance for him to get the football, even though he was covered well, he somehow finds a way to get it. 
Second down following the incompletion. Again on second and ten, it's Roethlisberger. And incomplete there, a nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. And the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. On third down, Roethlisberger. He's got his tight end complete, it's green. Big play there on the catch and run. 42 yards. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this, but run after the catch ability, rack ability, is often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. That's a pretty good celebration, isn't it? Gives him a little street cred in the locker room, too, doesn't it? Street cred, and then when they go out to dinner afterwards, he's still picking up the check. And yeah, nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. They come out here in the eye. Now Wilson. He's got time in the pocket. Buying time to his left. Into a double team and it's intercepted. A great read and it's picked off. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six. First Steeler touchdown. That was an interception, but on the field, the guys who are picking it off, they're not saying that. What word are they using? It's Oski. And that means catch the ball and go the other way. That's your vernacular. I've never heard anybody say Oski. Ask around. They'll tell you. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up. And we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. All right, Brandon, you know me as well as anyone. You know I don't usually advocate abandoning things during a game, but here we are in the second half. I think it's time to change things up. Let the running game go a little bit. Let's get to the passing game, and if you still want to get in the hands of the runner, maybe you swing it to him, throw it to him a little bit, try it that way. Here's Wilson toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Everything about that play was beautiful. A great corner route where the receiver worked the defensive back inside and then broke back to the outside to the corner. But how about the throw by the quarterback? Anticipation on the break from inside to outside. He threw the football. As the receiver turned around, the ball greeted him. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. And some changes here as the D-line separates some. Second and ten. It's Wilson again. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And they insert their dime package. Six DBs here on third and six. Expecting pass all the way. Now it's Wilson. And he's got his man in stride. Complete. 
Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Did you see that route the way that I did? I yep. thought he was trying to get deep Yeah, that first. wasn't the first option. No, not the, it came off of that guy, the deep guy, and came underneath on the drag, completed it very well. Now they'll run it on the toss. Evades the tackler, and now some space. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. And sometimes when you're watching a game, you can actually see drills in effect during a ball game. And what I saw there was what running backs call the gauntlet drill. We have to go through a series of defenders. We're going to hit them, poke at the football, make them bounce, spin, dig for extra yardage, the whole deal. And we saw it there. His running backs coach has got to be awfully proud of that run. Back to the ground on first. Again, it's Rawls. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Back now in Pittsburgh. It's the Seahawks with possession of the football, but they do trail here to begin quarter number four. Second down, here's Wilson. They set up the screen to Rawls. And he's going to get this one down right to the edge of the red zone of the chalk of the 20. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. From the red zone now, here's Wilson on first down. Throwing the slant pattern here complete. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. <laughs> Nothing flashy there, the slant to the slot. Oh, and the frustration for the defensive guys, because it's a quick play, and you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch, and then he's able to absorb the contact and complete it. Give him credit for batting it away, but unable to come up with the interception, and sometimes that joke does come true. Guys are on defense for a reason. Maybe their hands aren't quite as skillful as the guys on offense, but a lot of credit on that play for just knocking it away. Second and goal. Defense digging in again here. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Oftentimes when you're not winning at the point of attack for an offensive line, maybe they're getting out physical spread things out a little bit, make it more of a one-on-one -on -one blocking scheme, then you don't have to win it physically. You just have to win it by position. That may open things up for your running backs. That's your defensive back in the game here on third and goal. His pass caught at the four. Likely the play of the game here, trailing in the final quarter and going for it on fourth and goal. To throw is Wilson. And that is incomplete. They're turned away on fourth and goal. And the Steeler D will celebrate the goal line stand. The Steelers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There's good protection there. Excellent protection. So now defensively, you've almost got to get down into those starters blocks like you're a sprinter. Get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the pass. Easier said than done, though. Way easier <laughs> said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Now Roethlisberger on the right side, caught by Green. The reception good for seven. It's third down. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. Looks like a nickel set here defensively on third and two. Yeah, maybe expecting a throw. Roethlisberger will throw. He gets it to Brown. Complete. The 30. 10. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Antonio Brown. 89 yards. 
yards. And the Steelers are going to add on to their lead. It was third and medium. They popped the short pass, looking to pick up the first, accomplish that mission, and then they accomplished a lot more on that mission all the way for the score. Let me focus in on one word you used, pop, right? They popped the short pass, and then what happened after that? They popped the big run. Because now, once he caught it, didn't have anyone else in the vicinity to bring him down. And he takes off, and he kept going. Nice gutsy call. Even better execution. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. And last time, they had it fourth and goal. Rolled the dice, didn't get it. Now they've got to put that behind him, try to put together another drive. A yeah, simple tip of the cap, a nod of the head to the defense. Congratulations, you got us last time. But you didn't hold us the whole time. We got down to position. We were able to be in position to score. Let's go ahead and attack again. Continue to have that kind of confidence. Not worry about the one play that didn't allow them to get into the end zone. This time they'll be trying to get it into the end zone. We'll see what they do. It's a gain of five. And it'll bring up a second down. And the offense moving quickly to the line. And right now, defensively, you love that, don't you? I mean, you give them that play. And they'll take it every single time. It is. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. James Harrison coming in from that outside linebacker spot. He gets him down for a loss of five. On third down, Wilson. He's got curse. And he is out of bounds on the other side of midfield. It'll be a gain of 16 and give him a first down as well. And a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. On first and ten, it's Wilson. And this is incomplete. Second and ten now, Wilson. Complete, Richardson has it. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. On first down, Wilson. They set up the screen to Rawls. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. They give them 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. They're going to hurry back to the line now. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. Deep drop. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. After all the preparation, all the practice, a play like that will actually break your heart. They had everything they wanted, just unable to complete it. In the end zone, a big-time drop. And Pittsburgh with six defensive backs in the game here on third down. Now Wilson. That is caught at the seven. It's a 15-yard pickup, but it'll lead to a fourth down. Boy, they had a lot of real estate to make up there, but what a big... Now the Steelers put a stop to the action with a timeout defensively. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And Pete Carroll looks like he likes his chances with the offense on the field. They're going for it on four. One of the tight ends comes in motion. Here we go. It's Wilson on fourth down. And no, 
It's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Steelers are close to finishing off this football game. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. And that last reception puts him over 150 yards. It's so tough to cover a big tight end like that. It changes the chalk, as one of my coaches like to say, meaning the normal things don't apply. Uh, I used to say, okay, there's a tight end going out. We're either going to put a big linebacker on him or maybe a safety and call it a day. Now, because of the strength of that position and the sheer number of catches that they make as, as well as their dexterity, sometimes you have to put a cornerback on him because he might be the primary guy going out for a pass. It changes what they do defensively, and it's usually not good for and now the Seahawks are going to take a timeout here on defense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. First down and 10 now for the offensive group.